on April 16th, 2022, Matt Boeing just ran a time of 9.98 seconds in 100 meter and a time of 9.92 seconds in a 200 meter. I am Jamari from Just Jamari. I train athlete performance. In this video, we're gonna go over four things. Analysis of Matt Boeing's best sprints, analysis of his training plan, a full analysis of his genetics and body structure and what makes him so fast, then discuss his max potential in future races. First race we're gonna analyze is his race from April 16th in the 100 meter dash where he ran a time of 9.98 seconds. In the blocks, his reaction time was a ridiculous 0.56 seconds and he got to the 10 meter line in 1.577 seconds. This is important because in the science it states that there is a huge correlation between 10 to 30 meter sprint times and 100 meter times. For most athletes, if you get to the 10 meter in sub 1.7 seconds, in any race, you have to have a very steep driving shin and a good push from your glutes to develop momentum to fly down the track. Matthew Bowling was able to transition well into top end speed by keeping his feet under his hips and he was literally flying down the track by maintaining a tall posture and dorsiflexion with his feet. In the science, it states that dorsiflexion is important because it stiffens the lower limbs and allows you to utilize your stress shortening cycle so you can produce vertical force down the track very fast. The fast start he had can be trained by doing explosive broad jumps and single leg broad jumps, and the effective max velocity mechanics he had can be trained by doing pogos and barbell step ups. Now, let's get into his most impressive race by far, 19.92 seconds in 200 meter on April 23rd. Once again in this race, his reaction time and his start was amazing, but what really shined out was the second half of the race. Matthew Boeing was flying down the field without two key things that everyone thinks you need. He didn't achieve full triple extension and he did not land um, with his knees straight under his hips. Let me explain. Full triple extension simply puts your body out of position to strike and be reactive off the ground. Rhythm and timing is important and trying to overly extend only brings your lower back into sprinting. Now, uh, for the knee not being locked out under his hips, this is because he is producing massive amount of force from his quads, lower limbs, and hip extensors. Locking out his knee would simply give him a faster ground contact time, but less force into the ground. He was able to maintain his speed all the way down the track, which is trained by speed endurance work. Stuff like three sets of three 200 meter dashes at max effort with seven minute rest. Try that one out and let me know how it goes. Also comment below if you believe that Matthew Bowling's Races are the most impressive races you've ever seen from a college athlete. Now we can get into Matthew Bowling's training plan. There isn't a lot out there what Matthew Bowling's workouts are like, but since I have a background of training some guys to go sub 10.3, I have a pretty decent layout that he is probably doing. To get fast, you have to sprint at high intensity very often with a lot of rest. He probably has one day of acceleration, which consists of 10 to 30 meter sprints with sled runs and unresisted sprints. Then he mixes that with broad jumps, long jump practice, and explosive lifts like power cleans, hand cleans, and squat jumps. Then he probably has a max velocity day where he does 40 meter sprints and 10 to 30 meter flies at max effort until his time drops by 10%. Then he'll mix that with bounds, pogos, barbell step ups, and court squats. Then what really separates him is his ability to maintain his max velocity, and this is called speed endurance. I wouldn't be surprised if he's doing something called the 20 second drill, where he starts at the 200 meter and sprints as fast as possible until he reaches 20 seconds on the timer. Then he marks off the spot and tries to beat that spot with the next rep. Every single rep, you try to beat the spot until you fall off by 10%, and you need to rest seven to 10 minutes in between each rep. This is all speculation, but from my experience with working in top athletes, this is some of the work he's doing with some tempo days thrown in there too. People love to say he has the best genetics ever, so let's discuss his structure and why this makes him so fast. Matthew Bowling is six foot tall and weighs around 170 pounds. He has pretty long legs and a small lower limb complex with very good Achilles tendon length. This makes him very fast because of his ability to store and put out energy from his tendons rapidly. Even if you don't have genetically good Achilles tendon, you can train this by doing exercises that work the lower limbs and the stress shortening cycle. Matthew Bowling also has a very long frame, which makes him a polar type of athlete, which means he's better at deadlifts, cleans, single leg jumping, max velocity sprints, but is more poor at acceleration, deep squats, and anything that requires a full range of motion. One thing that is extremely important is not his genetics, but his upbringing. He started track running the 400 meter often, which allowed him to practice sprinting at max effort from a young age. This is important because anyone who is deemed to have great genetics probably is just slightly above average, but was competing from a very young age. Competing is the most important factor of becoming faster. If you want to get faster today, start sprinting with someone at your speed and try to beat them with a lot of rest in between each rep. It's honestly that simple. Competition breeds champions. This is because competition actually allows you to use your max effort and your max force production. So if you challenge your body and your neurological system to actually use max effort in every sprint and you give it a lot of rest, 
you're gonna train your body to utilize your fast twitch fibers and all the explosiveness you have. Now, what is Matthew Bowling's potential in my opinion? He's constantly getting better and working on his ability to relax in the other races. In my opinion, we could see a 9.7 or a 9.8 in the 100 meter. I could see him literally coming close to breaking the world record in the 200 meter one day and where his two potential at is in the 400 meter. I could see him becoming an Olympic gold medalist in the 400 meter. It's important to not write off every athlete as just an egg, so watch here on why Jordan was successful because of his mindset, not just his genetics.